In today's show, we're gonna look at PowerShell and strings. Strings turn out to be one of those things that you have to learn to work with in PowerShell if you're gonna write any effective scripts because a lot of the properties and stuff that you wanna manipulate as you move files or other items from point A to point B are done with strings. So today we're gonna to look at some of the commandlets that go with strings, and then we're going to look at uh, some working examples that you guys can put in a play right away. But first, here's our intro. <laughs> Man, that music just gets me fired up. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Bold Zebras. Those guys. And in today's show, we're gonna talk about PowerShell and strings, right? We're gonna look at some of the methods that you can use to do things like trim and replace and find and that type of stuff. And then we're gonna talk about some real world examples that I use in my day-to-day -day life and how you can put those into play for you too. Should be fun, should be pretty fast. So let's just jump right in. Let's switch over to my desktop here and we will open our friend PowerShell up. And then we will start with our good old faithful start transcript. Hit enter, right? That keeps that running log of everything we do in this session so we don't lose any of these smart things we're about to learn. And so to get started here, we'll clear our screen and let's just create a variable, say dollar sign cow equals my, one of my classic lines, Shane was here, boom, right? And then we'll type in dollar sign cow just to make sure it's there. Okay, so now we've got a string and a variable, right? That's not the only way you can get a string. You know, properties, a lot of different uh, objects inside of PowerShell are kept as strings, but this is just the fastest way for us to get one we could work with and do a little fun things along the way. And so the first fun thing we'll look at here is we'll type in dollar sign cow, and then we'll do to upper just like that. And what you'll see is that changes our string from lowercase to uppercase across the board. You also have the reverse of that if you need it to lower. So all lowercase Shane was here. Not bad, nothing exciting, but what we're gonna do, right? We're gonna look at some of these little methods like this and then we'll put it into a script in just one second so you can learn how to actually use that. So now we'll do dollar sign cow, one more thing. And what you could do also is you can do contains. And so for example, contains was and is true, right? So it's a true or false, it returns. So you could use this, for example, if you were sorting through the event viewer and you wanted to say, hey, uh, find me all the uh, events where you know it contains uh, com as an error, or in the error section, right? Or the message section. So lots of things you can do with uh, the contains. So let's just try one of those examples. And so the first one here, let's clear our screen. The first thing we'll do here is we'll start out with uh, just pulling up some of the items here in this folder, right? So we'll say get child item. Okay, so there's a list of all the files that I have in this local folder. All right, so let's clear our folder and we'll say get child item. And now we wanna find all the ones where the name contains Shane, right? So what we could do here is we're gonna do a where object, do a little friend the curly braces, and then we're gonna go dollar sign underscore dot name, right? So for the current item, the current file in the file system, uh, get its name property, and then we're gonna say where it contains, and we'll type out Shane like that. And then we'll put our curly braces at the end and hit enter. And so you can see that it returned one file, the file named Shane was here. But if we do our get child item again, you'll see there's actually two Shanes in there, right? There's Shane was here, and then there is Shane.txt. But because of the uh, capitalization being different, it didn't get them, right? Because uh, contains is case sensitive. So what we might do, right? Let's just hit up arrow a couple times. Actually, let's clear our screen first, and then hit up arrow a couple times. And so what we could do is, all right, well, that's, that doesn't exactly work for us, but we know that we could do a to upper. Oh, yeah, yeah, remember that? So change all the names to full uppercase and then say contains, and then we'll do Shane in all uppercase. And so now we get both of the files back from our return, right? So that's one of the ways to deal with capitalization differences. You know, you just convert the whole string to upper, and then you search for all uppercase or all lowercase, whatever might work for you. But of course, if we do a DIR again, um, you'll see that it didn't affect the files out here, right? This one's still capital, this one's still lowercase, because we're just, because we're doing the dot, we're not setting the properties, we're just essentially doing it at the display time for us. So pretty cool. That's a very practical example of how I use get child item. So let's clear screen. So another thing we might do is type in dollar sign cal, right? It's still Shane was here. Another thing that we might do with get child item here is we can do a replace. So 
what we might do is we'll do replace dollar sign and we'll do replace the word was with the way I used to spell it in high school was right I was cool I know I know right if we type that in now we get our string back with Shane was here but because we're not resetting the variable right if we do dollar sign count it is still the original way so that's another nice thing about all this right is we're just manipulating what's getting uh, output in this case output to the screen uh, but it's not actually changing it. If we wanted to change it, right, what would we do? We'd say dollar sign cow equals dollar sign cow dot replace and then was comma was like so. And then now if we type in dollar sign cow, chain was here. So we actually changed the, uh, the values there. But when we're doing the runtime stuff, we're just doing it in, in line. It's not changing it, it's just updating that object, which helps us because a lot of time in our scripts, we don't want to change things, we just want to make it uh, different for a script. Cool, cool stuff. All right, so with that in place, um, where I might use replace, because it is a very handy commandlet, um, is I would often use it to uh, deal with file, file names that don't work. So if you do get child item here, you can see that file and will not upload dot text is an example of a file that I can't upload to SharePoint on premise, right? With my SharePoint on premises, sorry, get the S in there before I get yelled at. Um, my SharePoint on premises, the system doesn't support a uh, special character like an and sign in the file name. So before I could upload all these files to SharePoint, I need to fix all those, but I don't want to go through and do it one at a time. If I get an intern, I would happily assign it to the intern, but me, myself, I prefer PowerShell. So what we might do, let's clear our screen again, is we would do something like this because we're PowerShell geniuses, right? We'll say get child item, and then we'll say where object, oh, it helps if I type it in correctly, where object, and then we'll say dollar sign underscore, so the current one, name, contains, right, that's a uh, command that we learned earlier, or not a command, but a method, an ambersand, like so. All right, so if we hit that and close the brackets, hit enter, so that's just going to return that one file, cool. So now let's take that and pipe it over to for each object, right, our good buddy here, and what we're gonna say for this is we want to, a curly brace action, we're going to do a rename item, and for the item, we're going to pass it the current file in the file uh, in the pipe, and we're going to rename that to dollar sign underscore dot name dot um, replace, and then we're going to do a replace on the ambersand, doop, like so, and we're going to replace that with and written in all capital, right? And, and then we'll close the brackets out. Obviously, you can do this any way you want. You know, you could also replace it with nothing. You could replace it with Shane is your hero, whatever works for you. Uh, but if we run that line, right, we'll get no news back. But if we do get child item again, you can see that now this is file and will not upload because now it will upload. So should have changed the whole file name. But that's a great example of a place in a real world that I use uh, replace. In my scripts, I need to go find something like an illegal character and uh, get that and change it. You know, sometimes it's like semicolons and backslashes, and we'll look at an example of that in just a second. But there's a, a great use of replace. All right, so let's clear our screen. What else can we learn here? Oh, yeah, one other thing I meant to show you here is let's look at this particular line. And so get child item where object dash property name dash like dash value and then star ambersand star, right? And then for each object, rename it. So this is just showing you how to use where in the newer, newer syntax, right? So where object got updated um, a while back. And so this is the other way you could use where object. So you can see in this example, I didn't have to use contains. And since we're teaching strings, I wanted to use contains. But this is the other way you could solve that same exact uh, problem we just did right a second ago. Right, that and those two scripts that I have on the screen right now, they both do the same exact thing, just different uh, syntax, different styles of doing it. The one at the top, this one, is the new fancy way. Uh, this one is the Shane was trying to teach you about strings way. So just in case uh, you come across these. Right, and keep that in mind also as you learn more about this stuff, 
Some of the things I do here, there are better, fancier ways to do them, but I'm trying to do them in ways that make sense and are the easiest to learn. So that's why sometimes I do things that are maybe better done other ways. All right, so let's clear our screen again. And so the next thing I want to talk about real quick is something called substring. And so substring, let's do dollar sign cal and three. So what substring says is I only want a portion of the string and I want you to just give me everything from the third space over. And so right, if we type in dollar sign cal, we're going to see one, two, three, four. Right. So I told it to start with the third, uh, with number three, and it started with n, but we can see that's actually the fourth thing. So one of the things to keep in mind when you're doing any type of um, manipulation with strings, so whether it's substring or characters to array or something like that, is that they start at zero, right? So zero, one, two, and the n is three. So that's why substring three brought us to n, okay? So substring, uh, that's an interesting way because that gave us just the back half of the string, but you can also add a second parameter to that. So we could do three comma, six and now we just get any e was which is kind of a weird thing to get so um but you can see that it gave us the uh, the six characters after uh where we started so something to kind of keep in mind you can mess with that uh there's a lot of different things you're going to do it and so let's just let's look at a practical example of how that works and um oh no before we look at the practical example one other thing i want to show you is another way you can do some trimming is you can actually do um, trim start. Oh, so trim start. And so then trim start chain, just like that. And so you can see that uh, space was here. So let's get rid of space. So we'll put a space on here. And so what trim start does is it will go from the beginning of your string until uh, all the uh, stuff you have in quotes there and just pull that off. So now we just have the was here portion of the uh, string. There's also a trim end. There's also a trim command. We're not gonna mess with all those, but um, you kind of get the gist of what those are gonna do for you. So let's clear our screen out and let's make a practical example out of all this. And so to do that, we're gonna kind of go back to my SharePoint roots again. But one of the things I have to mess with a lot, and maybe you don't do it in SharePoint, but you do it in other web technologies, uh, but I end up with URLs and they're a pain in my butt because they're all a little different. So here's the example of one. So boldzebras.com 443, right? So that might be something that's being returned by one of the commandlets that I'm using, you know, uh, get SP site collection and SharePoint Online or something like that. Um, but that's a very common string. But that string doesn't work like if I wanted to make a file name out of that or if I just wanted the host name. So let's look at how we would pare that down programmatically into a host name. And so to do that, I'm gonna say new URL. We're gonna say equals dollar sign URL dot trim start HTTP. I meant to make it HTTPS, oops. HTTP like that. And so now if we type in new URL, we got www.boldzebra.com colon 443. Close to what we want. And before I can get what we want though, right, because I need to get that colon 443 off there as well, is I want to also talk about something, and that is called the index of. So with your string, so we can say dollar sign new URL, we can say, what is the index of the colon? And so this is going to return the first colon, and we can see that is in spot 18. Why is that important to us? Well, the reason that that is important to us, let's clear our screen and try one more time. So let's do dollar sign new URL, and then we're going to say substring, and we're gonna start at the zero spot, right? So we want everything from the beginning, all the way over to dollar sign new URL dot index of colon, like so, and then we'll close our curlies, hit enter, Boom, now we have www bold zebras, right? So then we could have stored that in a um, variable called host name if that made it easier for us. And so now we have programmatically gotten the host name. This might all seem very tedious at this point, right? You're like, oh, I don't really know. But just keep in mind, right, when you're starting to try and automate solutions, like, you know, I have 40,000 SharePoint site collections I've got to sort through, and I need to programmatically remove 
all the front ends of those, right? To be an automated solution or something of that nature, you've really got to kind of get your hands wrapped around this stuff. So really my idea here was to expose you to a lot of these commandlets, show you how I was using them. I guess the commandlets isn't the right word. Expose you to these methods that I'm using and uh, how you can use those. But you'll have to kind of go and figure out where they are practical for you and your different solutions and know what your toolbox is. Also, if you didn't really see what you were looking for, keep in mind that you can also do something like dollar sign cow and then our good friend get member. All right, if we scroll back up here to the top, so it's a string type. Here are all the different methods available for a string object. So that gives you different choices around how you might uh, do some things. So maybe I didn't cover the thing you had or didn't scratch the itch you had. You can go in and uh, look at the different things here and then go learn how these work. So hopefully that helps you. Um, if you have any questions or comments, you know, you need some more help, something doesn't make sense here, definitely feel free to hit me up in the comments down below. Um, while you're hitting me up in the comments, hit the subscribe button over here. Subscriptions uh, always make me a happy camper. And then, of course, is, you know, if you need more help, you can hit me up through the Bold Zebra. And uh, there I can help you write your PowerShell scripts. I can uh, do mentoring. We do training. We have some co classes coming up, you know, different options available to you there. Or if you just want to shoot the breeze and tell me how fun I am, I'll accept that too. You can do that on Twitter, at Shane's Cows. So hopefully this all helps. Thanks, and have a great day. Me again. Hey, just a reminder, if you want to subscribe, click on my face over here. Or if you want to work together or just need a friend, hit me up over here. Or if really what you wanted was more PowerShell videos, it's probably it. They are over here. All right. Thanks. See ya. Somebody stop the recording. <laughs>